What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jacqueline and this is the start of a reading vlog. It is actually April 2nd and I am reading my first book for April so I thought it was appropriate for me to start vlogging for the month of April and all the reads that I'm gonna read. Hopefully I can just upload these weekly. I hope. Don't hold me to that if I don't. But anyway, so the first book that I'm reading is A House at the Bottom of the Lake. If you haven't watched my TBR video, I'll definitely link that up above so you guys can go check that out. But Gabby from Gabby Reads had messaged me after watching my TBR video and she was like, hey, let's buddy read this book together. And I was like, hell yeah, let's do it. So we are buddy reading A House at the Bottom of the Lake and I think she's a little further through um, that I am. I'm at like 37% right now and I think she might be a little closer to like 50%. Um, but anyway, so far I'm really loving it. Um, I love how like short it is and how creepy it is, but it's like creepy. It's not like monster scary or like so far that I'm in it. It's not monster scary. Um, it's like playing on your fears, like drowning, claustrophobia, like those kinds of things. And um, I really, really like that because it really does make it real and it makes it like really shuddering. And I also like how this book is like, I don't know, almost like reading my mind. Like I'll be reading something and I'll be like, oh my gosh, this is like, I wonder about this. And then like the characters say it. And then I'll like think, oh my gosh, that's like claustrophobia. And then the character says it. And so I really just like that. It's not like I'm reading the book and, you know, I just have to like, think about whatever my thoughts are by myself. It's like I'm reading the book and the book is also telling me exactly what I was thinking. Like I just, I don't know. I really, really like that because I just feel like I'm not guessing for things. Um, so I'm really, really enjoying it. I took a break for now, but I'm about to like get right back into it. I'm hoping to finish it today. Today is April 2nd and I'm going to read it all the way today since it's only like, I think Goodreads said it was like 119 pages. I'm reading it on my Kindle Paperwhite. So I have no clue exactly like how many pages it is. I don't know. But um, it's like going to be a very quick book. It's very easy reading for me and I'm really enjoying it. So hopefully I don't update you guys later and say I hated it after this. So, oh yeah. What is up everybody? I cannot believe I literally started filming on like Tuesday or Wednesday and it is now Saturday. Like I don't know what happens. Like where does the time go in the week? I have no clue. So I think the last time I updated you guys... Um, I had just finished House at the Bottom of the Lake. I did a buddy read with Gabby from Gabby Reads and that was like so much fun. And I felt so accomplished for like having read a book just a couple days like within April. And so that was really, really cool because it was just like a novella. Um, I rated the book, um, I think I rated it four stars. Um, it was actually a really great read. It was just the fact that it was so crazy that I still don't even know like what I read. It was kind of just a little, I guess it could be metaphorical writing, um, but I, I feel like it. you just take it however you want. And so Gabby's the one that like came up with the whole like, oh, the house under the lake was like a metaphor for a relationship or love. Um, but the main story was about these like these teenagers um, that were dating and found this house underneath the lake. And I actually do like I I think that it's a really great book for anyone to read because it's so little like I think it was like a 100 and some pages. So we literally like th flew through it and it is labeled as horror. And I actually both Gabby and I we felt that it was like scary. Like I know that I was creeped out by the writing style of it because it seemed like Josh Mallerman took everyone's like worst fears, like relationships, claustrophobia, drowning, like those kinds of things and implemented them into the story. So I actually really liked it. It was like the perfect amount of like light horror, I guess, if you want to say. Um, and it was really, really good. And then so far this week, like I've literally been trying to read a, a bunch of different books. Like I started Wolf Hunter River and I've read a little bit. I don't remember what percentage I'm at for that. That's in the Still House Lake series. And then I started My Lovely Wife, which I actually do really like. And I'm about 20 some percent in that. And then I have to read um, Reconstructing Amelia 
by Kimberly McCreet. And this I haven't like really started at all. I'm actually about to start it right now because I'm doing a discussion for it in my book club. You're free to join. I have the link down below. Make sure you fill out all the questions for membership. Um, and so if you do, we do so many fun things. We do like monthly discussions. Like for instance, we do a thriller monthly discussion every month. And then we flip flop between YA and fantasy every month. And then we do like a less popular genre, like historical fiction or contemporary or something like that. And you do get to like help um, vote on like the polls for the books that are chosen. So that's like really fun. And then we have like TBR challenges and readathons and exchanges and like so many fun things. And so you should definitely join if you like anything about books or if you love reading. But speaking of, I need to read Reconstructing Amelia because I'm doing a weekly discussion for it. Usually we do a lot of like end of the month discussions. And so every Tuesday I'm going to have like the questions up. So I have not read the 121 pages yet for this and I need to do that. So I'm about to do that. But I decided to start a reading journal and I'll show you just a little bit tonight because pfft, I just got it and I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, I started this reading journal and I've only set up a little bit, but I think it's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so much better, like me taking notes on my reading and then that way when I update you guys like with what I'm reading or what I read like even when I do wrap ups and stuff I'm gonna have all the stats in here I'll be able to look through like my whole entire year's worth of reading and like see my notes and what I thought about certain books it's gonna be awesome like I am so incredibly psyched and so I have it with me right now because I'm gonna like take notes while I read Reconstructing Amelia and I just cannot wait so let me like flip through just I literally have like three pages set up so I'll flip through now and then once I actually like use it for a couple weeks and kind of decide what other spreads, then I can do like a whole video about it. So, all right. So I just got this off of Amazon and I can link it down below. It was only like $6 and it has really thick pages, which I really like um, because it doesn't like bleed through. And so all I did was write reading journal and it does have an index and numbered pages in it. And I just wrote things in pencil for right now. Um, just because I was like, I was just like figuring out what I was going to do. Um, I did cover some things in pen now. I'm thinking of doing a little something here. I'm just not sure yet. Um, but I have the books I read in 2019. So I put in like so far what I read in January, February, and March and my star rating. And so I really like this because I'll be able to see a whole overview of like what I read for a whole entire year. So I kept these two pages like free. And so um, these should be filled up because I'm going to read 100. Now this I'm using as kind of like a um, calendar type of view for readathons or like special reading activities I'm going to do um, because I am going to plan on hosting a readathon in the summer. And then also just with like my book club and stuff. Um, we have like special readathons and stuff or challenges and I want to kind of like plug those in because I always forget to like like when they are and I always forget to plan for them and so I'm super excited. I also I like I want to do a spookathon in October so I started it in May just because this is already April and I just don't have any time to plan anything in April at the moment so I'll definitely do this and then I just went ahead and started the two books that I'm currently reading right now so that way I can start taking notes but I think before I write more books down um, I'm gonna do a couple more spreads that I saw um, just so that way I can um, just like use this for some other things um, I mean it's all gonna be book related um, but for instance like I might do like a whole calendar view of all of the book videos I'm putting on YouTube and like check mark them off once I do or do like a brainstorming thing I'm trying not to have this like too super set up like I do my main bullet journal I actually 
um, bullet journal like for real on my main page. And so I have a different bullet journal for that. And I kind of like set it up and I'm like really careful about it. And I like, you know, figure out what I like. But this one, I kind of just wanted to use it for like doing reading stats and just keeping notes of the books that I'm reading. Um, that way I just don't forget anything. And so um, it would be nice if like, like if I could use this for the whole year, um, I would totally like buy another one and like use this again for like, you know, just get a new one every single year. So I'm going to read some of this. Um, hopefully I can make a pretty good dent in it like today and tomorrow. Um, I hope I like this book. I've read a different one. I've read, um, Where They Found Her by Kimberly McCree and I really like that. I gave it five stars. So hello everybody. So it is Sunday evening and I'm about to read some in a book. I think I'm going to keep reading and reconstructing Amelia, but it's really hard for me because I started listening to my lovely wife today on my way to work and I am loving that book but I have to work again tomorrow and so I'm thinking that since I really enjoy the audiobook I should probably like leave it for when I'm actually driving to work so while I'm home I should probably just read another book so I think I'm gonna read some Reconstructing Amelia last night I only got to like 11 pages because I suck and so I'm going to read some of that and I will try and update you guys with some of my thoughts in a little bit. Hello everybody. Today is actually Thursday and so I need to end this whole reading vlog so I can start another reading vlog um, for next week. I actually think I'm going to try and do the off the grid readathon which is actually this weekend. It starts tomorrow. It's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And um, all you have to do, like there's not any challenges or anything, you just stay off your phone as much as you can and read as much as you can. I do have to work tomorrow and I have to work on Saturday, but I can probably read most of the day on Saturday morning before work and then I have off on Sunday so I can read like all of the day. On Sunday so I think I'm gonna do that and then that way I can film that for the beginning of next week's vlog and you know go through a couple books for you guys but I actually finished two books I think since the last time I updated you a couple days ago um, I read I read my first Taylor Jenkins read book and that was on Tuesday so just a couple days ago I actually started it that day and finished it that day it was just that good. I gave it five stars. I literally love that book so much and so I can't wait to read more of Taylor Jenkins Reid. The book was about this girl who had gotten married and after her one year anniversary her husband had um, gotten into a helicopter crash and they thought he was dead and then four years goes by and like this book was written like I was practically crying like I felt the pain of the girl Emma. Um, and so like, you know, her husband had died and she literally grieved so much and finally she had to decide to like go on with her life because otherwise she was just going to be, you know, sad for forever. So she started looking at, you know, the happy things in life and finally she was happy again and she got engaged to this guy named Sam and as soon as she got engaged, her husband came back like he had survived the helicopter accident and was literally like his survival story like I don't even want to tell you guys because I I just want you to like read it in the book it was so oh my gosh it was just so I don't even know the word like I felt so bad for that character Jesse and I really didn't know what guy I was voting for because it wasn't anybody's fault in the whole entire book. Like literally who could have planned for this to happen? And I felt bad for Jed because of him getting lost and all the stuff that he had to deal with was surviving for four years. And then I felt bad for Emma and Sam because it's not like they on purpose, like she wasn't cheating on her husband on purpose. Like it was literally four years. And so I didn't know who I was voting for. And the book was just so amazing. Like it was just so, so good. I think I might do like a rave review video for it because I just loved it that much. And so loved that book. Highly recommend that one. And then I finally finished My Lovely Wife. It actually took me like six days to read that book. And it wasn't necessarily bad. I rated it four stars, but I felt like 
it was actually kind of boring for the first like 70% in the book. I was writing down in my reading journal that I wrote down at 67% there were still no twists or turns or reveals or anything. Um, the ending was like pretty good, but I felt like I could predict a lot of the book. So I think it's definitely a better book for like amateur thriller readers and not me because I just read so many thrillers like I want to be so surprised I want things to keep me reading I want to be swept into it so that one was a four star read for me if you are you know if you like light thrillers well not necessarily light because it did have a lot of like it was like a pretty gross book it was about um a married couple that like kills people for like date nights like that's their thing that they like to do together so it was really like really weird and that's what like kept me reading is like the weird storyline but I just felt like it wasn't fast enough there weren't enough like reveals and twists and turns so I actually think I'm going to start oh I think did I forget to tell you guys I think I might have forgotten to tell you guys that I am 120 pages in of Reconstructing Amelia because that's the book that I'm reading for my book club at the moment because I'm doing weekly discussions and that one was took me a little bit to get into it about maybe 60 pages to like actually get into it. Now I actually do really like it and I've been writing a bunch of like questions that I have because I think there are going to be a lot of like twists and reveal reveals and it's about this um, daughter who commits suicide but her mom really doesn't think that she did commit suicide so right now her mom is trying to like figure out like what happened because her daughter was like a straight-a student and like they had an amazing relationship and so I'm really excited to like read more of the story and figure out like what is going on but in saying that I had off today I had a bunch of videos to film and the other day when I was off we found out we had termites so this week has been pretty crazy but next week I actually have like some spring breaks so I'll be off for a couple days so I hope I get a lot of reading in next week um I actually think I'm gonna start the night Olivia fell next and hopefully that goes well um so far I've been sticking to my TBR I've only read one book the one true loves technically wasn't on my April TBR um so I've only um, you know, went off track once so far. So yeah, but I'm going to end this vlog here. Let me know down in the comments, like what you were reading this week, or if you've read any books that I read. And also let me know if you're going to participate in the off the grid readathon. Um, I am excited to participate in that. And I will like vlog still what I'm doing. And I'm a I'm really excited to do like more readathons this year. That's kind of one of my like reading goals is to participate in more readathons and like vlog them and show you guys my TBRs and all that. So I'm super excited. But I have a nice cold bold rock and I'm going to start some dinner because my husband's about to come home and then I'm going to curl up with a nice book, The Night Olivia Fell probably. So I will see you guys in another video. Bye everyone. Bye.